Welcome to the MDH Daily News for Thursday, September 20th. I'm your host, Nick Andrews. And I'm MDH Executive Editor, Denise Fulton. Today, gout expert Brian Mandel says to stop treating gout and start curing it. Also today, the FDA issues a new risk evaluation and mitigation strategy for immediate release opioids. And later, the United Nations aims to eradicate tuberculosis by 2030. But we begin today with recommendations from the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force on Behavioral Intervention for Weight Loss. The task force recommends offering intensive behavioral weight loss interventions to obese adults or referring them to these services. The B-level recommendation applies to adults with a BMI of 30 or higher. The evidence review focused on interventions for weight loss and weight maintenance that could be provided in primary care or referred from primary care, such as nutrition counseling, exercise strategies, and goal setting. The task force found adequate evidence that behavior-based weight loss interventions improved weight, reduced incidence of type 2 diabetes, and also helped maintain weight loss after interventions ended. Researchers found little or no evidence of harm associated with interventions such as group sessions, personal sessions, print-based interventions, and technology-based interventions like text messages. The research also notes that interventions that combined behavioral interventions with drug therapy resulted in greater weight loss in a 12- to 18-month period. However, they also note that the combo therapy had a higher rate of attrition than behavioral interventions alone. The recommendations and supporting evidence review, including data from more than 100 randomized controlled trials, was published in JAMA. You can read that and more about the research by clicking the link in the podcast notes. Gout could be cured with just a bit more effort from doctors. That was the message from Dr. Brian Mandel at the annual Perspectives in Rheumatic Diseases meeting in Las Vegas. The issue is a failure to consider the basic workings of gout when making treatment decisions and advising patients. Lowering serum uric acid with medication does work, but doctors often don't go far enough, according to Dr. Mandel of the Cleveland Clinic. While mysteries still surround gout, some things have been solved. For example, it's now clear that lowering serum uric acid below 6 mg per deciliter will reduce flares. Dr. Mandel discussed a 2017 study of over 300 patients with early gout. That study found that 63% of patients who took febuxostat lowered their serum uric acid levels below that 6 mg target, compared with just 6% of patients on placebo. In his talk, Dr. Mandel also addressed medication adherence and the efficacy of some medication options. You can read more of his comments by clicking the link in the podcast description. And opioid prescribers will need to be mindful of a new expanded risk evaluation and mitigation strategy from the FDA. The recommendations revolve around immediate release opioid analgesics in the outpatient setting as well as extended release and long-acting opioids. The REMS program requires that training will be made available to healthcare providers who are involved in pain management. The training will not be limited to just the prescriber. It will include nurses and pharmacists as well. FDA Commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb says that this new effort is aimed at arming providers with the most current and comprehensive information on the appropriate management of pain. Dr. Gottlieb also notes that the goal of this expanded REMS is to help prescribers with the latest evidence on the appropriate prescribing levels for specific conditions, and that the goal is to help prevent patients from becoming addicted by decreasing unnecessary or inappropriate exposure to opioids. Educational materials are now required to cover broader information about pain management, including alternatives to opioids. You can find some of these materials in the podcast notes. The United Nations has set 2030 as the year to achieve global eradication of tuberculosis. And on September 26th, the UN General Assembly will hold a high-level meeting to solidify the eradication plan. Dr. Teresa Casaeva is the director of the World Health Organization's Global TB Program. She says it's unacceptable in the 21st century that millions die of this preventable and curable disease. Though death rates and new cases are falling globally each year, significantly more resources are needed to boost access to preventive treatments for latent TB infection. 
progress in Southern Africa and in the Russian Federation shows that steep reductions are possible. These areas have seen a 30% reduction in mortality and a 5% decrease in incidence per year. In terms of prevention, WHO has recommended targeting treatment of latent TB in two groups, those living with HIV-AIDS and children under 5 years old who live in households with TB-infected individuals. Achieving global eradication won't be cheap, according to WHO officials. By 2022, the gap between funding and what's needed to meet the 2030 target will exceed $6 billion. Tuberculosis caused 1.6 million deaths globally in 2017, and the WHO tuberculosis caused 1.6 million deaths globally in 2017, and the WHO estimates that of the 10 million new TB cases last year, tuberculosis caused 1.6 million deaths globally in 2017. And the WHO estimates that of the 10 million new TB cases last year, about 5% were multi-drug resistant. And that concludes this edition of the MDH Daily News. You can find links to all these stories in the podcast notes. For MD Edge, I'm Denise Fulton. And I'm Nick Andrews. And don't forget today, the MD Edge CardioCast is all new. We're giving you part two of the discussion on ESC 2018, featuring Katherine Hackett, Bruce Jansen, and Mitch Zoller. You can subscribe to the MD Edge CardioCast, as well as the Daily News, the Sitecast, and all of our podcasts, wherever podcasts are found.